Well guys, I hate to say it, but my salvage 2017 Volkswagen Golf R is no longer salvage. It's been quite a few months since I took ownership of this car, and honestly, there was a few points where I didn't think it was possible to rebuild it and I'd have to cut my losses. This car has taken me on quite the journey to say the least. Winning that car in Copart felt like I hit the lottery. That was so easy. But that feeling didn't last that long. Once I got the car in person, I knew I was in over my head. I know my limits, and from the outside, everything looked doable on my own. But that is until I got a closer look. It wasn't the deployed airbags, or the ruined dash, or even the front end that scared me. It was what was hiding underneath frame damage. But I knew I couldn't give up. I had to prove to myself and you guys that if you put your mind to something, you can achieve anything. With a little perseverance and help from my friends at 23rd Garage, I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. After months of waiting, my delayed parts had finally started to arrive, and the car was finally starting to look like a car again. All that was left now was just getting the car repainted. And even with all those challenges that I was able to overcome, you have to remember, this is my first time ever really working on a car. I wanted to just challenge myself and see if it was possible. And, you know, I'm gonna let you guys be the judge of that. So without further ado, check out the Volkswagen Golf R. So I guess the question now is, what do we do with it? I can keep it and modify it, which I've actually modified it a little bit more um, than the previous video. We actually put new brakes and rotors on to stop that, that annoying clicking sound. But honestly, it's like, do I keep it? Do I sell it? And honestly, I'm leaning more towards selling it so that you know we can continue to do different builds, either another wrecked car or maybe we go into flipping cars. I'm not so sure. I didn't even think we'd get to this point so quickly. It's pretty incredible if you ask me. So I'm reaching out to you guys. What do you think? Do we jump into another wrecked car and rebuild it? Do we modify a car buying it base? Or do we buy a, you know, a, a beater car and we fix it up? Because there's lots of cool different ways we can go, you know, with this channel. Now, what you guys are probably most excited for is how much did I spend in total on this build? And in order to break that down, there's a lot of different sections we have to talk about, but the overall cost of the build, which is how much did I spend on paint, which came out to a total of $2,000 to get the full car repainted and also to get the dents pulled out and fixed up in the rear uh, tailgate that was damaged from YRC Freight, another terrible company, a terrible shipping company, uh, that damaged the parts. I was able to get that repaired uh, within the deal for $2,000, which honestly wasn't bad. They were able to paint match it and pretty much repaint four to five panels, but that brought the entire bill to $24,625 and 41 cents, which isn't bad. That's below my $25,000 budget. Now, funny enough, I've been keeping and holding on to all of the used parts that were salvageable from the build, pulling off trim panels from the, you know, exploded dash, as well as just parts off the uh, the old destroyed tailgate that actually wasn't damaged in the accident at all. And I've had all of these up on eBay and there are still maybe about 10, 15 or so items on eBay. And I've actually been able to sell about a dozen of them, which surprisingly has earned me about six to $700 in earned income, which brings the bill back down to about $24,000, which isn't bad. So, Overall, what exactly is next for the car? Now, I guess the rebuild series is officially over with this video because there's nothing left to rebuild on this car. However, I don't think it's going to be the last video where you see the Golf R in because I do have a few other things in mind that I want to do. Maybe some small cosmetic upgrades, maybe explaining how exactly the uh, the title the rebuilt title application goes and how exactly I was able to do that. I wanna explain that and maybe a few other videos. I don't know if you guys are interested wanting to learn how to do your own alignment on a car and 
just things off the top of my head. But ideally, I think the best way to move forward with this channel would be inevitably to sell this car and find another project to work on, whether that, like I said, a, another car to rebuild, uh, maybe a clean titled beater car that we can fix up. Uh, or, or so on and so forth. But obviously, I think in the next couple of days, I will have this car up for sale. If any of you are actually interested in purchasing this, feel free to send me an email, which is in the description of the video, or just leave a comment, let me know, because it's gonna be, it's a pretty solid car. Everything's fixed, everything drives well. So I'm thinking of listing it for 25 or 26K. Um, but obviously that's, We'll see what happens there, but I think 25 to 26K is about what this car goes for with only 34,000 miles. Keep that in mind. It's a 2017 fully loaded adaptive cruise control, uh, you know, so the market right now for around this car is 31 to 32,000. So I think taking five to 7K off is a pretty solid deal, but that's pretty much going to be it for today's video. I guess, let me show you super quick. I threw on some StopTech rotors and some um, EBC Red Stuff brake pads. I did that a little bit ago. It was super quick to throw on. Um, I wanna show you what that looks like. But, um, and that did officially stop that clunking sound back and forth. So whatever, I'll actually show you the pads that were on the car. As you can see, these are the new rotors we put on. Stop Tech, you know, Sean helped me. And we do have some EBC red stuff pads under there. You can't really see them. Yeah, you can kind of see some red showing through if it focuses. You can see the, the red EBC pads in there. And um, that stopped the clunking. These were the old pads that they used or whoever had on the car. And these, I don't know what brand these are. I mean, they got tons of meat left, but there's no, uh, they're definitely not OEM, and these are smaller on the ends here, which allowed it to shift in the in the bracket. So I'm glad these are off, and I'll give these to the next owner of the car. So was it worth rebuilding this car? Definitely a loaded question. We could separate that into two different parts. I think financially, going over the numbers, and then as a whole, if we start with the numbers financially, being that I'm in the car about $24,000, $25,000, and I'll probably be able to get twenty-five to twenty-six thousand dollars. Then we've broken even on it. Now that excludes labor. If we include labor, another five to six thousand dollars, then no, it is not financially worth it. And ideally, I did break even because cost about twenty-five, and the car's worth that. So we broke even that way. So if I was to keep this car as my personal, then yeah, I saved about seven grand from buying a clean titled one. And you don't even know what's wrong with clean titled ones. You're taking a risk even when you buy clean titled. But I would be in it and I am saving money about seven, six to seven K by rebuilding this myself, excluding labor, which is really freaking cool. If you know what you're doing, you can save, or you know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I was able to rebuild it. Um, you can save quite a bit of money if you wanna take on such a big, big project like this. Now. As a whole, it was also 100% worth it because like I said, I have learned so much. It's gonna save me so much money now that I know how to work, at least on European cars, but work on cars in general. It's really getting over or getting that confidence because I remember I was afraid to take off a bumper when I got my first car, I thought I was gonna break it. But now I have so much more confidence going into this. So it's really awesome that um, that I've been able to do that. And also I've met some great people and made some great friends along the way. So that's also super cool that this car has pretty much given me that opportunity and you know, go out of my comfort zone doing something I've never done before. So this is definitely something that I would like to do again. But overall, I'm happy with the way the car has come out, especially for never doing anything as extreme as this in my life before, prior to starting this YouTube channel, I think that most I've ever done was put brake pads on the car. But honestly, if you put your mind to something and you don't quit and you don't give up, you can literally accomplish practically anything. And sometimes it's okay to ask for a little bit of help. So I learned a lot with this whole rebuild and I learned a lot from doing this on my own car, working on, on a car. It's allowed me to learn skills that I don't think I'll you know, they're just priceless. And I've saved thousands of dollars from not only fixing my girlfriend's car from the skills that I've learned rebuilding this, but I've also helped fix other people's cars in the community, friends, family. Um, so it's just some, it's, it's really incredible what I've learned and was able to accomplish 
from rebuilding this car, but it's on to a new chapter. Uh, and with all that being said, if you're liking this content, if you have any ideas as to what I should do next, definitely make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. But with that being said, make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Also, before we sign out, check it out. They were able to do an incredible job fixing the damaged area on the back here. Totally perfect. I'll show you what it looks like. Look at that. Beautiful. Like it was never there. Pull me closer.